back to the show. So as you can tell, I'm like, you know, chit-chatting because I've got my guest here with me. Have you seen that? You see, this is where we do a little homework on a Rise 360. When I say you should see a movie and then you don't see the movie and then we're talking about the movie and then you don't know what the movie is about. But let me just ask, have you seen the Nollywood movie for Maria Ebon Pataki? I did talk about it on a Rise 360 saying it was released on Netflix. Well, let's just say that we are going to be bringing you a big, big, big review of the movie right now. I have seen it twice. So basically, this movie tells the story of a woman who experiences painful childbirth and the experiences of the aftermath of it, you know, including the unspoken and often distressing challenges of just transitioning into motherhood. Now, it has Mego Tanwa, it has Gabriela Folayon, it has Tina Mba, Judith Aldu, and it was directed by Dami Lola Orimogunje. And I would be honest to say that this movie is such a huge eye-opener on postpartum depression, but the reaction this movie got out of me needs to be discussed. You guys got to me. I have, I'm so offended. I'm so embarrassed as well. Because, okay, you know what? Mego Tanwa, I've got you here with me. <laughs> and I've got Dami Lola Orimogunje. I got right. the name right, yeah? Yes, you did. Thank you. See, I, I'm so sad because you guys made me cry. You did. And it's, it's, it's not, I'd say this, with, with films, especially in Nollywood, it's, it's not always something that, it's not always so difficult to make people laugh, you know? Right. I mean, a little laugh here and there is fun. But to get emotion, to get sadness, to get anger, and it's not like it's, hap it's like you go from sadness to joy and then to anger and then right. to complete confusion I, I couldn't watch the movie i had to skip some parts because i'm like this is too i don't like this suspense i need to know so let's talk about this film it's about postpartum depression right yes. and dami lola you directed this film yes i did why did you do it <laughs> it I mean, like, literally. It sounds right. like he's been scolded. Right. <laughs> no, I'm not um, scolding. I yeah, want to it's fine. That. It's fine. What inspired this film? Um, firstly, I would like to thank you for bringing sure. me on the show. Um, sure. For me, it was you know it was a thing where I wanted to make a film. My first feature film. I wanted to make a film that. Your first feature film. Yeah, it is. Wow. I wanted to make a film that is very intimate, family drama. You know, emotional, like mm -hmm. a kind of film where people watch and then react the way you're reacting. Yeah. You know and. I was thinking of the subject matter to do. And then randomly, I just started talking about postpartum depression with a friend. And then I saw a thread on Twitter mm -hmm. talking about women you know, going through postpartum depression. And it just made sense. You know? And it was very sad, emotional for me, even though I couldn't you know, connect because I'm a guy. Yeah. You know, but I, I could see what people are actually going through. And also, there's a case where mental illness is not taken seriously yeah. in our society. Yeah. You know, so it just crossed my mind, like, this is a good film. This is a good subject to tell. And I'm the kind of filmmaker that loves topical social issues. So mm -hmm. I jumped on it. I love it. But Meg, you are a woman. <laughs> and just as I was telling you before, you know, uh, I introduced you, um, it became back on the show. I have a friend who's dealt with this. Mm -hmm. And why the movie was so real to me was because I could see that lack of understanding. Like, you're not okay. And you don't even know that you're not okay. So you're judging yourself because just like you, um, Tina Mba was saying in the film, that, oh, are you not a woman? You're right. a mother. What is wrong with you? You cannot you're carry your baby. You're not the first woman to have a child. Exactly. So what was this movie? I was asking if you're okay because I don't know how you can film that. <laughs> oh, I'm very okay. You are? <laughs> I'm an actor. <laughs> how was it filming this film? It was, it was intense. It was intense. And it's interesting that you said that about your friend and people around her not understanding um, because in my research for the film that is during pre-production, pre I had to speak to a lot of women, you know, because getting them to actually open up was a problem. And it comes from this thing where, you know, in our culture, it's, it's, it's part of, you know, womanhood, you know, you have give, you get pregnant and you give birth, it's normal. You're not the first, you won't be the last. Some people have 10, and, you know. Mm -hmm. And people, it's, it's, it's shameful. It's almost like there's some kind of stigma attached to it. So how do you open your mouth and say you can't bond with a child? Some women actually do not like their kids, their babies. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's not a thing, understandably so. Like, it's not an easy topic to, to, to address. So I had difficulties, um, you know, with women not just wanting to open up. So I had to speak with a number of them. And my, my research led me to you know, this man in Abuja who happened to, he lost his wife. To postpartum wow. depression. Yes, she actually committed suicide. Wow. You know, so from him, I got a lot of um, information. I was able to, at the end of the day, get this together. Is a and this is a real yeah. story. A number of women actually get to that go all the way. It's that bad. 
I can't tell you the number of people in my DM and in his DM, yeah. people calling and saying thank you for telling the story because it's not it's not an easy thing to say. People dealing with it are not yeah. able to speak up. So for me, as an actor, this is why we are here. It's not in, yes, the movies and the stories for entertainment are great, fantastic, it's part of it. But at the core, this is the, these are the kind of stories I like to tell, you know, stories that are impactful. We're here talking about this. There's so many. There've been so many rooms in you know different spaces where we have people now talking about it, and yeah. that was his aim for telling the story. I'm not going to tell you like, okay, this and this is what you should do. We're probably not going to give you a solution at the end of the day, but we want to create awareness. We want people to get talking about the subject matter. Postpartum depression is real. You know, this 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 is what it looks like. A, a picture of a regular you know, mm -hmm. family just living their life and dealing with it. You know, it's interesting you'd say that because for me, when I saw the film, I will be honest, I was angry. I told you I, I, was, I was good to fight you. Right. Because <laughs> I'm like, to be honest, my thought, when I saw the end of the movie, do you know the first thing that came out of my mouth? How dare you? <laughs> Literally, that was what I just said. I was so mad. Right. I was like, that's it. <laughs> I, didn't, I, I felt I felt cheated on 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 the woman's behalf because I felt like okay, we've seen this woman go through everything. Yeah. But that can't be it now. Are you going to give us part two? <laughs> I mean, it's, no. it's funny because a lot of people ask me these questions. Yeah, like, like that can't is there going to be a sequel? <laughs> what happened? Why did you end it this way? And I'm like, I think it's the perfect ending, you know. And I'll tell you why. Please. Uh, because, like she said, postpartum depression is very, very real mm -hmm. and it's very serious. I mean, yeah. we're coming from the point of view where people don't know about it. Mm -hmm. In fact, most women, most um, older generation don't know about it. Yeah. Most men don't know about it. Now we're telling it. And there's this thing uh, where people watch a film and then there's a happy ending at the end of it. And then it just makes it look like, oh, it's light. Oh, it's serious, but it's not that serious. Yeah. But we don't want you to watch the film. You see the ending of the film and then you just pause for, for some seconds. And you're yeah. like, oh my God. Yeah. And then you, it brings your mind to think about yeah. to think about this conversation. And I feel like it's driving the conversation, even though people don't like it, but it's driving the conversation wildly more because mm. of that powerful ending. See, and that's I cinema. I was angry. <laughs> because it was like, I'm sorry, by the way, we're gonna be, I don't want to give out too many spoilers. spoilers. Yeah. <laughs> but there was a part in the film where it looked like you were okay. Mm. Where the character was which fine. Is, which like is, she was getting yeah. better, right? Know, she, 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 only, she, only her her she only gave herself, I think what she did was, she gave herself um, that finishing, like that mm -hmm. ending where she, before she dies, that's nice. <laughs> I didn't even watch it. Anyway, I mean, yeah, you I see, you have, super, you have to watch it. Honestly, yeah. <laughs> but before she does what she did, that was even that was you know, why it annoyed me. She decided to live her life, you know, for like the few minutes, for like the few seconds. She, she lives her life. Yeah. She lives her life before she actually did, and which we didn't see during the period of the film. Mm -mm. So it's it's a win-win, you know, for her and then for for the film. So, to be so basically, yeah. That's why I have to give you the credit because I think you told the story in a way that, you know, I feel in Nigeria, what we do is we move on too quickly. Too quickly. Exactly. We move on. Exactly. So for instance, in the film, you know, at the end of the day, she kills herself and mm. then they grieve and then something great happens and then the family moves on. Yeah. And then we have this, well, it is well. Exactly. It is well. She wasn't okay. You know, she, she was disturbed. She was really that would have been it. Yeah. And that's what we have. So the film did not give us a chance to move on. So we had to deal with it <laughs> yes, by force. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So now moving forward, when you talk about, you know, what you want, other issues you want this film to touch, for instance, the nagging mother-in-law. Let's talk about that for a second. Yeah. How do you how do you want to relate that to, a, to situations that we see with the relationship between mother-in-laws mm -hmm. and, you know, newly new mothers, yeah. you know, in yeah. the Nigerian setting. You know, the interesting thing, or what I find interesting about it is uh, the mother-in-law, played by the fantastic Tina Ba, yeah. <laughs> she actually did care for her. She, mm -hmm. did. she loved her. She cared for her. She, she tried to feed her. No, she prayed she, she, for her. She cared for the baby. She cared for Maria. She also cared for the mother. You know, in our own best way. I mean, that's is that care? Thing based it on is. her based understanding. On understanding yeah. She prayed for her. Remember, <laughs> she sprinkled holy water uh, on her. Holy water now, that, that she used to slap her face. <laughs> <laughs> now, that is her <laughs> version of care. Yeah. So, and this is why this movie is so interesting, is so important that we watch and we watch with our parents. Mm. Let's watch it with our parents and you know people of different different ages, so they they get an understanding. 
yeah. or at least they start talking about it. This was how best she thought she could care for her daughter-in-law. Mm -hmm. She didn't. I didn't. She didn't hate Derry. No, it, everything she did, it came from a place of love. Even the nagging and the these and killing she and all of that she was yeah. doing, it was from a place like of love. Like the breakfast setting. So I, now, I watching this and talking <laughs> about it, people will now will begin to 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 understand and probably figure out how to care better. Yeah. Care for them the way that they need to be cared for. Not the way you think Not the ideal. Way. Exactly. Exactly. Second issue that I loved that you brought up in that film was that pesky visit people do when someone just has a baby. Yes. <laughs> Why did you touch on that? And I love the fact that you focused on Darren's reaction to the like, you said something about like, Jemal Lord, like, oh my Lord. Eh, hey, let exactly. let them Why was that a thing for you? So one of the important things I thought about while making the film is to highlight the way people react to these issues. Mm -hmm. You know, basically it's kind of like a mirror of the society. Yeah. And then it's like a mirror of the society, the family, extended families. It's a thing where people do not know what is wrong with you. They do not care what is wrong with you. There's just a certain standard for you as a new mother, as a mom, as a wife, as a woman. Like this is who you should be. This is how you should be. And they try, they try so much to enforce these standards on you without actually carrying your, your place, you know, and, and you see it in the, the first time when we are um, the naming ceremony, when they yeah. kept giving unsolicited advice, mm. like, it would, I mean, <laughs> you know, it's, it's a common <laughs> thing, it's relatable, and also at the supermarkets too, you know, <sighs> which is part of what she was saying about, it's kind of like an information to people, like, you need to be aware, you need to be informed, I feel like a lot of people just talk, a lot of people don't, there's no sens sensitivity of, who is this, what is this person going through? Well, that was, where, where does the place of um, it takes a village to raise a child come in? That's why I think that's why people. I think I think that age is, you know? is a little bit faulted, you know, okay. because you know, in a way that you, I mean, I feel like there are ways in which you can. There's no one way of raising a child. Mm -hmm. You know, you can't raise. You can't say this is a particular way. And I feel like our culture is embedded with this is how you raise a child, and yeah. everybody wants to raise that particular child that one particular way, which sometimes doesn't work for or it's not applicable to that child. Mm -hmm. So what happens then? You know, and then. Like I said, mental health is forgotten totally. So nobody cares if Darren is all right or if she has anything going on with her. People just want her to live, love her child, smile, yeah, and be happy. Be happy. Like, be happy, Darren. Yeah. Which is what I thought your doctor was trying to impose on you. Tell me about the doctor character, because I have reservations about her. <laughs> but let me understand what you wanted to show us with that character, Dami. Um, I, I think it's also like a reflection on society, where um, I feel in our, I think we're not doing enough in yeah. terms of, you know, um, knowledge, you know, to new mothers, to people generally. For example, she's, um, she's a new mom. She actually went through that pain. During, mm -hmm. uh, I don't think the mother and the doctor shouldn't have given her the necessary steps. Yeah. You know, there is anti um, postnatal. Yeah. You know, there should be proper information. There should be proper guidelines, you know, to people, to, to new mothers, to, even to the husband. You know, mm -hmm. telling people this yeah. is how you should live. But she didn't do that until they went back and then, you know, it, I feel like we don't take this thing seriously. You yeah, know, that's and, just a Which is like basis of this conversation that we're having here. All right, now, Meg, if you were president, this is a very vital question, if you were president for a day and you were going to pass a new law on maternity leave, mm -hmm. how long do you think maternity leave should be for every woman? And for every man, because there's also paternity leave. Because right. Gerald Afanayan looked like he needed help. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he needed a break. Right. Man's was exhausted, <laughs> to say the least, you know. So, if you were president, I were going to say, listen, maternity leave, mom, this is what it should be. What do you think about that? I think I think six months is decent mm -hmm. for the mother. For the mother and for the for father. The mother, yes, for the father. Three months. Yeah. yeah. Exactly, because it, it, it seemed as though... She had to get back to her normal setting quickly. I was shocked you. I was having a friend, because this conversation, like you said, this movie, I watched it the first time alone, the second time with a couple of friends, and we began talking about it. And she lives in Ireland. And what she told me was, this is, this is strange. She said, this movie is dark. And I was like, this movie is dark. She's like, yeah, this movie is dark, catchy. I'm like, why? She goes, because in Ireland, they get two years off. I was like, I don't understand. <laughs> she was like, some people get two years off, and in that two years, they get pregnant again. <laughs> she get, and like, you get, she gets two years off. Wow. And in my head, I can't relate to that. So is it too much? To, is, is that too much time for, you know, because is that paid for? Yeah. 
Yeah, of course it's paid yeah, for. Yeah, it's paid for. I mean, I, th I think, I think yeah, it's not too much, you know, because... <laughs> for a society that can afford it, I think it's yeah, fantastic. Yeah. If it can but in Nigeria, it. how realistic would that be? Or a society that can we afford it? Afford we can't afford it. Afford right. it. I think it would be an unfair ask. Mm -hmm. So, yes, it would be an unfair So, in terms ask. of policies, in terms of what... Because one thing I feel, like you said, the movie was meant to create awareness. Let people know this is how this thing plays out. But the reality of it, which is people dealing with it, and for someone who's dealing with postpartum depression, watching the movie and is just telling themselves, "I don't want to be this. I don't want this to be me. I can relate to this lady. I can relate to Darren. I can relate to everything she's dealing with, but I don't want to be. I don't want Darren's end to be my end. You know, how? What can they do? Where do they go from this movie? Where do they go to from here? I think the answer is actually in the movie where the doctor, um, the doctor advised her to see a therapist. She was given the number of a therapist. The doctor I think was that's not the, a therapist. No, the doctor was not a therapist. So she, she never saw that therapist. She, she never did. That right. that's the thing. Like, uh, at, let's ask ourselves: How many times are we dealing with someone, and someone prefers a, a, a solution, and we actually act on it? Right. So many times, you actually just sit, and it a thing like depression. I was I was talking about this a few days ago. The dangerous thing about depression is how comfortable it is to sit in it, to stay depressed. Coming out of it takes work. Not a lot of people are willing to put in that work. So I hope. What it would do for people dealing with this is to take that step. Talk about it. Say exactly how you feel. Don't be ashamed about it. You almost just died having a child. Mm -hmm. That's even, even hearing you say that. Because the scene where you go, I don't want to have kids anymore. Yeah. I was like, <laughs> who has the boss to say that? Like, exactly. how do you say that? So it has to be okay to say it. Mm -hmm. It has to be. Hmm. So, Dami, if you were going to think of an alternative ending to the film, what would it have been? Because I had a friend of mine, yeah. she's also a filmmaker, she's mm. Sophie Kandu, you know, she's a, she's a writer. She texts me, she goes, you know, she posted a, a, um, a picture about the film, and she was like, I'm angry about it, like, I don't, this film is just annoying me. What kind of ending is this? Why did you do this to me? You know, because like, he's, like you've explained that ending, but that ending left us on a huge cliffhanger. Right. Like, we're all just now putting in our own emotion into how we would have preferred. So if you were going to give us an alternative ending, what would it have been? So I think the alternative ending was in the final draft of the script. Don't make us fight. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't, don't do this. I what mean, do you mean? Which so we shut, by the way? Which we shut. <laughs> but, you know... Don't say it. You did what? Discretion. Wait, wait, wait. Director's discretion. This is, this is intense because I feel like we're an army here that I've got to come for you. So you need to tell me now that there's another possible ending. Yeah, possibly. That never came out. Yes. Was Why? it any better? Ah, <laughs> that's a valid question. <laughs> that's a valid question, right? Well, and you can't tell us what it is. Uh, I mean, so, uh, so one of the things I wanted to do, you know, when we're writing the script is I love abstract endings you know mm -hmm. i love endings that you can't you know it's open-ended it's open -ended. you know it's left to you to decide what it is you know so we had this ending where we don't know if she dies like mm. she's still alive she's not dead dead you know and then we have like gabriel coming in into the bedroom like he walks in instead of the shot we had he walks in and then he sees you know he sees the lady and then the emotions that surround that and then end we I shot that <laughs> But like did she, did she really die though? Exactly. Ah, we no, don't no, 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 with this, this ending. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I mean, suppose. No, I think the, the, the way you ended the film, you know, like I said, the she finally got she carried her baby and made her baby exactly. stop crying, put on some music. I thought she was gonna get frisky with her husband. I was like, okay, she's getting herself back. And then voila. So I think this was a lot more dramatic. Exactly. This sent the message home. Exactly. And it just put a full stop on it, like postpartum depression is real. I think you should have just written that in capital letters. Oh, it is. <laughs> but anyways, guys, I have to say a big thank you to both of you. You guys did an amazing. Thank See, you I tell much. you, I did a 20-minute video on Instagram. You should I was it. going to post it, you post but it. I think it was a little too angry. I was so emotional. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> it's fine. Like, it. so emotional. I'm like, because the movie really got to me because I have a friend who had to deal with this and I saw this woman try to explain to people why she was acting the way she was, but she didn't even know why she was acting the way she was. So she was always crying. She was just not happy until she just took a break and mm. then she was okay. But that break she took came with a lot of baggage, a lot of questions. Mm. Why are you taking the break? What is wrong with you? Mm. And you know, people just talking and that 
that movie was like, oh my God, what if this happened to her? What if, if this, is this what she was? I felt terrible. Exactly. Yeah. So I have to tell you both, thank you. Thank you very much. So <laughs> much. If you haven't seen the movie for Maria Ibu Pataki, you need to watch that film. If you haven't cried in a hot minute, it's a good <laughs> way to start. <laughs> Guys, thank you.